Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Halifax International Security Forum in Nova Scotia, Canada, one of the world's truly great security forums. Our coverage here is sponsored by Boeing and Leonardo DRS, and it's my honor to be talking to the Director of Poland's uh, Institute for International Affairs, Swobomir Debski. Good morning. Uh, it's uh, always great. Uh, we have these conversations here at the Halifax Forum. Uh, I want to talk about your new book. Uh, it's about uh, Europe whole and free. You were one of the editors along with uh, 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 Dan Hamilton from the uh, School of Advanced International Studies uh, at Johns Hopkins University in Washington, D.C. Talk to us a little bit about your premise because you actually are holding, uh, making a case, not just from Europe, but from a worldwide case on why it's important to have a war on global corruption. Talk to us about that. You know, 30 years ago, uh, that's the point of departure of, of our book, um, we heard the great speech of, of, of President Bush uh, in Mainz, uh, which, uh, who uh, gave us a great vision of Europe, Holland, free. Uh, the book is about this 30 years period, we asked a group of 30 plus um, experts from both sides of the Atlantic, from very different, you know, uh, alienations in, in terms of, of, of policy, uh, politic, uh, politics, and uh, um, we asked them three very simple questions. What has already been achieved? Uh, what actually may uh, um, have um, went wrong, go, go wrong? And uh, the, the, the last thing, uh, what we should do to push this agenda forward? So uh, coming back to your question, um, uh, one of the responses we got is that we need a new uh, idea for the future. We need the idea which could uh, reinvigorate uh, democracy and uh, could make it uh, again, uh, not only popular, but appealing. That people would like to uh, uh, go in this direction, would like to support uh, uh, um, the free world, uh, and would like to change the world we live in. So, 30 years ago, uh, this idea was freedom. Across the world, uh, we, we uh, witnessed a demand for, for freedom. Uh, in Germany, in Poland, in Central Europe, in Hungary, in China. Uh, remember the Tiananmen Square, uh, what happened there. So uh, freedom was you know, a, a ground global idea around uh, which uh, people wanted to rely on and push it forward. Now uh, we believe um, the global campaign anti-corruption could be such an idea. Um, and we believe that uh, at least we should talk to the people, um, starting from the experts, then to the politicians, to uh, create a kind of the ground consortium of individuals pushing uh, this idea forward. And, and what is the best way uh, to organize that, right? I mean, governments always, uh, democracies are always putting pressure uh, on countries around the world to uh, press ahead with uh, pro-democratic. I mean, we're at one of the world's leading conferences on advancing uh, democracy. What's the right way to structure this kind of anti-corruption campaign, given that almost every country has corruption and some of actually the most civilized democratic countries have a tendency of sort of legalizing uh, a certain measure of corruption if you want to look at it objectively. What's the right way to sort of pursue this in a way that will have the kind of global traction, uh, well, you know, the transatlantic traction, the European traction, but also the global traction you think is necessary? I think that an, any grand global idea starts at home. So we should do everything what's possible to clean our houses uh, first. Then we could uh, look around and uh, look for allies, uh, those who are doing uh, a real uh, job at home, and uh, create a kind of the uh, uh, global platform on which um, we could simply promote what we are doing and uh, how we should proceed in the future. A kind of the global rule of conduct should be established. A certain rules of uh, uh, supporting transparency, supporting uh, fighting with the money laundering, uh, this kind of, uh, um, um, you know, sometimes uh, ideas which uh, um, years ago uh, were quite obvious. Uh, they were, you know, uh, it, it goes without saying that we need to um, um, focus on uh, procedures, we should focus on uh, conflict of interest, how we should deal with them, we should focus on transparency, 
that there, there is no uh, um, a place in, in contemporary democratic world for untransparent uh, uh, behaviors. Uh, even if there is everything is clear, this untransparency uh, is, a, is a vulnerable place. Um, let me uh, take you to the question of what's been accomplished in, in the last 30 years. Uh, Poland was a nation that was on the first line, the Solidarity Movement, Solidarność is what sort of was one of the catalysts uh, for the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union. Obviously many other factors that went into that economic, military construction pressures. Uh, but you know, what has happened right from your perspective over the last 30 years? What has been uh, less uh, successful in the integration of a Europe Poland free? Of course, we, we should bear in mind that uh, only 32 years ago, the war uh, in the heart of Europe was still standing. And there were guys in the watchtowers of, of, the, uh, of these wars ready to open the fire to people uh, um, asking for freedom. Uh, so uh, we need to uh, um, uh, understand that what we achieved uh, during the last 30 years uh, is really incredible. Um, Europe has never been as uh, free as it is now, it's never been as united as it is now, and probably not as peaceful as it is now. Yes, we do have a lot of problems. We have Brexit, we have um, um, problems with uh, um, the quality of, of democracy, uh, we have um, people on the streets on Paris, on uh, Prague and a lot of places. We have a war uh, in Ukraine because of Russian aggression. We have to occupy territories by Russia and Georgia and Moldova. So yes, we do have a, a, a long list of problems, but still remember well, how the world, how Europe looked like 22 years, two years ago, uh, or 35 years ago, uh, Ronald Reagan uh, uh, asked uh, um, uh, President Gorbachev to tear this wall, uh, this wall uh, in, in his Berlin speech. So uh, we should um, uh, understand, having in mind this point of departure, that however there are a lot of reasons to, reasons to complain, we are still much better off uh, than a couple of decades ago. Uh, I, th I think just about everybody would agree with you on that. One last question about Russia. Uh, Poland obviously uh, has been uh, uh, a nation uh, either at the crossroads or on the frontier. You're on the frontier uh, now uh, with our uh, Russian friends and uh, certainly there's Kaliningrad that uh, is uh, somewhat more of a direct issue for everybody further north from you but also from a Polish context. Um, how First, Putin is increasingly unpopular at home. That always risks uh, external adventurism to prop up his base. That's one of the reasons he has done some of the things he's done uh, internationally. The Ukraine uh, effort came when it was timed at a time uh, to bolster his popularity at home. NATO has been stepping up the case for uh, deterrence. Um, are those from a Polish, but there's always a, a, a sneaking concern from a Polish perspective that those efforts are still not enough. Give us a little bit of an update is Russia more dangerous now or not? And what more, from a Polish perspective, does the alliance have to do to bolster that kind of deterrent capability? Uh, Russia is not dangerous as long as we have a proper deterrent uh, on the ground. Uh, if we have it, uh, then uh, we can uh, try to use uh, other uh, tools, other methods. We, try, we can try to engage Russia uh, in constructive dialogue. But deterrence is a crucial thing. Uh, we don't want to um, to go to war with Russia in any you know feasible future. Um, we experienced that a couple of times, uh, and the result was uh, uh, the result was quite badly uh, for both sides uh, and for Europe. So uh, that's why we are so consequent. We are so as a you know countries of eastern flank uh, so vocal that um, we should not look for, let's say, a um, um, flexible approach to Russia without the credible uh, uh, deterrence uh, on Eastern flank. We should um, uh, try to convince the Russians that the only way to come back to the well, uh, world's, uh, the, the com community of, of, of countries um, uh, respected uh, which, who, who, which respect international law uh, uh, is, uh, you know, goes through Ukraine, goes through Crimea, goes through Donbas. 
Um, um, you know, already in 2015, I made the point in the Russian newspaper that uh, to reconcile with Ukrainians, uh, Russians would need to solve the problem of Crimea. This or other way, but the only uh, political solution with Ukrainians, respecting their, uh, their, their rights, respecting their uh, territorial uh, uh, sovereignty, there is the only way they could re-establish themselves as a credible, as a credible contributor to international order. Um, do you uh, agree with uh, French President Macron's statement that NATO is increasingly uh, a brain-dead uh, alliance? I think he was trying to be a little bit critical of Washington and some of the statements obviously the United States had made, but this sense that the alliance is not adapting as quickly to uh, the, the future. How did you regard and how, from a Polish context, were his uh, remarks uh, re regarded? Because I think he was trying to make a little bit more of a nuanced point than the headline everybody seized on. I think that, that, that there are enough people around NATO uh, who are rocking this boat uh, quite effectively. So the, from the Polish point of view, um, I think we um, stay calm um, we need to focus on what actually NATO, NATO may do, uh, and actually it is still quite effective alliance. It's still uh, able to provide uh, um, a reliable d uh, deterrence, and we uh, can still work together. So uh, to President Macron, um, you know, if, if I may suggest him uh, anything, it's better to uh, uh, go to the Allies, talk to them uh, behind the closed doors, then uh, um, send the message uh, about the conclusions uh, to the outside world. Because other way around, um, you know, uh, complicates things and, and invites more trouble than we can deal with. Uh, and I think part of the message, uh, as I think most people know, his concern that the United States won't be there as effective of a deterrence and so why European nations should build up their kind of indigenous capability so that Europe can defend itself in the event that in some future case uh, 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 the United States isn't there. Do you think that it's possible for Europe to create a military capability that will deter uh, Russia if the United States is not a part of it fundamentally? In the uh, short-term perspective the answer is no and France is unable to do that. So. Um, I, I second President Macron with, uh, uh, you know, call European uh, uh, allies to do more, to spend more on, on defense, to invest more in capabilities. But actually, all, uh, or at least most of European allies are saying exactly the same behind the closed doors. Poland is doing that. We are investing in our uh, defense. We are investing... Um, uh, we are spending on, on um, upgrading our, our capabilities. Um, uh, and, you know, we, we would like to see, well, France uh, doing exactly the same. You know, there is a, uh, maybe not a perfect be benchmark of 2% of, of uh, GDP spent on defense. Um, France is, is unable to, to, uh, to reach uh, this level. So, uh, again, uh, do your uh, homework at home, consult with, with allies more, uh, and then uh, let's try to have a common message how we should deal with the threats which are around us. And uh, one last question, uh, democracy. There is uh, a big question about the future of democracy in Europe. The eyes uh, are cast always uh, toward the south, certainly to uh, Orban in Hungary. Poland has come under criticism as well uh, for some uh, anti-democratic uh, accusations about the Law and Justice Party. You and I have talked about this over the years uh, as well. Um, you know, but there are even concerns elsewhere across the, 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 the continent about the sort of the future of democracy. How do you see that? Uh, how do you address those criticisms and what can uh, nations in Europe do? Because there is a very powerful strain of not authoritarian as, uh, authoritarianism as such, but almost at the first time we're in a competition of ideas where there's democracy, full democracy on one side, but then almost the Chinese or Putin-like democracy light, you will have a certain degree of freedom as, and, and economic prosperity as long as you don't criticize the government. Um, I think... Uh Again, coming back to this grand idea we, we, we need to, uh, to develop, um, democracy is a self-regulating system. But the, to have this system working, um, we need to convince people that democracy, democracy serves their they cause, that uh, it's something really um, they need. 
uh, because they could, you know, uh, um, make politicians accountable. They could um, call for transparency. They could um, check them. Um, so. Uh, in my view, there is a growing competition between our, our countries you mentioned, I mean, China, Russia, uh, who are saying that actually we are all, you know, all systems are alike. Um, and uh, why you, you criticize us if you have problems with your, uh, um, you know, um, at home with, with your corruption? Uh, you say that we are corrupt, but, you know, look at around you. Uh, so we are alike. So to, to, to challenge this message, uh, we, we need to um, uh, make a democratic, democratic system more effective. We should convince people that there is only a um, solution when they have a say and they have an influence on, on what's going on in, in, uh, in the government and how government uh, operates. So um, uh, there are no you know, magic wand. We you know, are neither here. We, can, we cannot discover in Halifax, nor in Washington, nor in Warsaw. Uh, the, the only thing is to, uh, to, you know, to be convinced that we are, uh, as a democratic family, uh, we have uh, um, the best solution invented for the pe people's problem. Swobomir Debski, uh, who is, uh, along with Dan Hamilton, the editor of Europe, Whole and Free, Vision and Reality, a great collection of essays from uh, thinkers around the world. I noticed Corey Shaki uh, is in that group from the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Swobomir, Jankuyam Bardzo, always uh, a pleasure and, uh, and look forward to uh, seeing you either in Warsaw or in Washington. Absolutely. Uh, looking forward for that. Or, or, or Halifax, as the case may be. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.